Why can't this guy not level up? <laughs> this is my thoughts on episode five of Tsukimichi Moonlit Fantasy, so let's jump into it. For the most part, this episode really kind of follows uh, Makoto as he's traveling along with several other people, including Toa and Rinon, the two sisters that they recently saved, as well as Mio, and for a brief moment, Tomoe, <laughs> as they arrive to a, another guild house or some kind of base. Uh, he, he doesn't know what the name of it is. He's like, I don't recall the name of it. It doesn't really matter. Uh, they end up finding out that the word of their admission into the guild has obviously been lost since this entire town has been wiped out. Apparently, they used some kind of mind manipulation in order to erase the fact that they caused it. But uh, they're eventually going to have to go back to another venture guild in order to get re-registered. And that's what we find out. Even though on their way, they've killed rare mobs, even in himself killing a couple rare mobs, he's still level one. So <laughs> at this point, I'm kind of wondering, I, I don't even know if this guy's even getting any kind of experience. Like, he's he's... He's outside of the laws of the leveling system of this world. So it only, always registers as, him as level one. Or maybe they'll find out later that he's actually level one infinity or something like that. So it doesn't register exactly what his level is. But uh, he's obviously super powerful. So he can't be level one. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see if, if, that, if that ends up coming to anything. But because he's so frustrated with his two companions, he decides to trick Tomoe into going on a adventure of training just to... Uh, kind of one-up Mio, because obviously they're in a competition. So he's like, you know, hey, uh, you should go on a <laughs> on a journey of a knight errand and actually level up. So she does that, and she runs off. But again, he's still with Mio, and they all traveling with together to get to this uh, this one town where Toa and, and Rinon need to go to. And on the way, they're obviously collecting a lot of materials. It seems a lot of focus of this episode is around the the comedy of the of the material gathering, which is... You know, you can't destroy certain parts of the monster because that's the part that's worth a lot. Don't kill this part of the monster because that part's worth a lot. So you kind of have to hit right here. Otherwise, you'll damage some of these parts. Uh, you had a little couple of moments where Makoto is a little bit bothered by the fact that this girl that looks like this, his, this crush in the other world is covered in bug juice, cutting up monsters. But yeah, they finally ride at the, the town, again, get re-registered. And then we find out that uh, there's a quest that Makoto's looking at. That requires some of the eyeballs from the mobs that they just killed. So he's like, okay, I want to take this job, turn in real quick. But there's a little rumor going around this this place that he's this the person that's actually uh, issued this quest is there's some kind of you know suspicious thing around it that uh, people that take jobs from this particular company their stuff happens like their stuff gets just you know stolen. Some shady people show up or whatever. Uh, but he ends up hiding his stuff and eventually going to the location for the actual quest giver and it, it kind of cuts at the very end that he's not doing things the way he should be doing things and this is where I don't know I I should trust this show at this point like it's been doing a lot of things that are typically tropish and you know retread waters but in interesting ways but based on the idea that he wants to become a merchant he's showing up this place with these goods at a trade company this person is saying he's doing things wrong. It makes me believe that he's going to get shot down because he's not a merchant of some sort of caliber. He doesn't have some sort of training or knowledge that he should have in order to become a merchant. So they're going to essentially say, you need to go get a you know, go to this academy and actually learn how to be a merchant. Because what does he show in the preview for the next episode, or at least the 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 what do you call it, the end, the end screen for the episode is a schoolroom. So, <laughs> like every single anime out there, we have to have a school arc. So, like I said, I, I, I should trust this writer at this point. He's been doing a lot of good work with this story and the comedy and everything in it so far. So, it shouldn't be a bad thing, but it does look like this show might possibly be going into a school arc of some sort, or at least a some episodes, um, or maybe they'll be creating a school in the Demi Dimension. Who knows? Which I should get into before I forget. Um, yes, yeah, Tukumi did have a period of time where we went back into the Dimension where he is building his nation. We get a little bit of an update of what things been going on since they've been gone, uh, including they've been basically deviating each race to do different things. The dwarf are repairing things and creating weapons for him to test. Uh, we have the orcs are building. What looks like some sort of... It implied that it was building a palace for him, but it also looked like it was some sort of village um, just for him. Maybe recreating his actual hometown. 
Uh, it looked like everything was so stupid close to each other that it seems like it might be a Japanese <laughs> small town area, rural area. Um, that's what I'm assuming is happening is that because he's mentioning the idea that Tomoe is looking into his mind. Um, it was showing clips of something that wasn't Jap Japan, but my assumption is going to be like a his hometown in Japan. But we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Then he also had the lizard men are mining and protecting the village itself from the outside threats. And the ant people are building in the mountains. And apparently some of the ant people have started <laughs> taking on human-like forms. <laughs> like how that one of them's like, they're still working on it. And suddenly this leg just protrudes out of this girl's chest. <laughs> like, can't keep her form together. Yeah, he also checks out the dwarves. And they're offering a lot of different types of armor for him. That obviously, uh, he, main hero's not going to run around in some super awesome plate armor or scale armor. He's got to be, like, casual. So he does find this little suit that apparently it it hasn't increased. It does have more dampening effects or absorption effects for his mana. But apparently when he thinks about the inside out and it switches, it increases his mobility but decreases his defense. But it fell apart. So he's like, can you create another one that's a little more durable? And the guy's like, I'm going to create one that kills you. Because <laughs> obviously when he says, if you put it on, it's going to kill you instantly. And he puts it on, he's like, you put it on already. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like uh, Emma's starting to be a little more uh, cocky, too, which was kind of interesting. When he first shows up there, he's he's acting very formal to everybody. And she's like, wait, why are you changing your demeanor? And he's like, well, I've kind of been hanging around humans for so long, which basically, for those that don't know, it basically implies that he's being uh, he's being more formal in the idea of addressing people politely. Whereas in his own dimension, he should be acting more higher authority in the way that he speaks, that he's essentially speaking down to people rather than speaking up to people. And she's like, you shouldn't be doing that. When you're here, this is the way it's supposed to be. It's like, okay, Emma's being Emma's being feisty now. <laughs> she's changing her character. I, I just got done doing a first impressions with Chris on this show, and I'm like, Emma's just so sweet and pure, and now she's doing this. Yeah, we also had some funny antics around uh, Mio when they were completely overblown at this point, which does bother me. I hope it doesn't take too long before we get Toa and Renan back. I... I honestly was looking forward to the addition of Toa and Renan because I figured that Toa would be a perfect kind of straight man character to how overpowered Mio and and uh, Tomoe is. So having her kind of get removed from the picture so quickly is kind of a little disappointing. So I hope that they... I, I'm assuming based on the fact that he's doing business still currently with this town, uh, the uh, Sige town, that he's going to bump into her again, but currently it's playing it out as if he's leaving her behind, which really sucks. But yeah, me, I'll be alone. <laughs> She's like, there's two beds. Maybe I should destroy one before he gets back. That way we have to be forced to sleep in the same bed. doesn't work out for her. But uh, yeah, great episode. Still loving it. Uh, that's my impressions on episode five of Tsukimichi. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below. Comment, let me know what you thought of the episode. Subscribe if you haven't already. Consider supporting us on Patreon if you can. And y'all take care.